What's good, everybody? N.W. Piper coming to you from the coast of Oregon. Smoke in. My Bing's favorite. And in it is King Frog Morton. My most favorite is English in the world so far. Like, I found it. The holy grail of Englishes. No joke. But I digress. I wanted to talk to you guys about if you'd be interested in posting a video of your most crazy true story. A story that happened in your life that probably nobody would believe, but you know for a fact it happened and it's true. And if you do it, let me know because I'd love to watch it. I'm going to share one of those stories with you guys right now that happened to me. And I think about it in December because it has to do with the family member that came up. He's not actually blood related, but he's one of those people that, um, you know, he's been a part of your family for so long and uh, that, you know, he's like your the uncle who's not your uncle or your, you know, your stepdad who's not your stepdad or dad who's not your dad. But... This individual had come up to visit me. He's from Las Vegas. And um, if you could picture Sammy Davis Jr., you know, with the, the just all of Las Vegas, you know, just the epitome of Las Vegas, like 1970s Las Vegas, that's this guy. Um, he's wonderful, great sense of humor. Um, he's a Jewish guy. And, um, you know, wears the glasses and little kind of skinny guy. And, uh, but a good dear friend of mine. Anyways, he lives in Vegas and uh, came up to visit me in Oregon. And it was in the, it was in the winter months and he showed up off of the plane and he knows I'm a pastor. And so everything he talks about is, about God, you know, because um, he wants to have that type of connection with me where he, he wants to act like he knows what he's talking about when it comes to theology and stuff like that. <laughs> so, but he doesn't know what he's talking about, which is totally cool. Um, you know, he's just one of those guys. So I go and I pick him up and it had been raining in Oregon straight. I mean, you guys know if it's in the winter, we're raining. And the day that he flew in from Vegas, it totally cleared up. I mean, it was beautiful. We had had the worst weather for like a month. He shows up and it's beautiful. And he knows it. And so he gets off the plane and we're talking and stuff. And he's like, Jason, see, God has blessed you because of me. The rain has stopped. The sky is clear. And it's all because I'm here. Man, the Lord loves me. I'm blessed. And I just told him, I said, you know, I don't, he, and he just lives like this. He's the kind of guy that just thinks that he is just the most blessed person in the world, which is great. I mean, I think everybody, if they had that kind of mindset mentality, would be so much happier if they just felt that everything that happened to them happened because they were just the most blessed individual in the world by God. The story is so crazy and so true. Hang in there, please. So, so he gets off the plane. He's talking about how beautiful it is because he's here. And I just kind of shrugged it off like, well, you know, we had a, a break in the weather for whatever reason. And so he wanted to go crabbing up here because we have good crabbing here on the Oregon coast. And he asked me if I would take him crabbing. So I was like, yeah, I'll take you crabbing, no problem. I know the perfect spot. And so we drove then, I don't know, it was a couple days later up the coast, a couple hours. And um, we loaded our pots up with turkey. Because up here, if you're going to go crabbing, you go and buy stuff like turkey, turkey legs, things like that. You hook it up in your crab pot and you throw it out in the ocean. And then crabs go into your pot. So 
we go and we load up our pots and I'm getting ready to throw mine out. And he goes, whoa, 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 wait, wait a second. We've got to pray over these pots that the Lord blesses these pots. Now, here's the thing about this guy. I don't think he's ever set foot in a church in a day in his life. He's not the kind of, he's not a church goer guy. He's, he's casinos. I mean, a whole nother lifestyle. But when he gets around me, because he knows I'm a pastor, he all of a sudden turns into like Moses, this guy. So I'm getting ready to throw out the pots and he's like, let's pray over this, that, that, that God just blesses these pots. I'm like, okay, whatever, right? Let's do that. That's never a bad idea. So he starts praying in King James language, right? I mean, and he's serious. Oh, thy God of thy heaven and thy earth, bless a bountiful harvest of crabbeth todayeth in thy holy father's name, right? And he says, amen. And so we throw these pots out and we let them sit for 30 minutes. We bring those pots up and they are stuffed full with crab. I kid you not, but this isn't the part of the story that's gonna freak you out. So he sees these pots and they're literally overflowing. And his spiritual ego is going through the roof next level, right? So a few days ago, he's like, hey, God cleared up the sky because I showed up in Oregon. You guys have been raining for a month and now it's sunny. And he said, Jason, I just got done praying over these pots. And that's why there's so many in these pots. And so at this point, I'm thinking, you know, the, the sky cleared up because the sky cleared up. The pots are filled because I knew where to take you, right? I knew the best place because I live here. And um, so, but you know, I'm letting him ramble on and ramble on and ramble on about how he's just the most blessed person in the world. Here's the crazy part. So, and this is absolutely true. I just wouldn't even believe this if, if it didn't happen to me. So, we run out of turkey. Um, we had given our last uh, bit of bait out in the in the last throw of pots. So we're out of turkey. And I told him, I said, you know, we're just going to have to, after whatever we get, we get, and we're just going to have to pack it up and go home. Um, and we had a ton of crab anyway. So he says, uh, well, you know, let's let's pray about that God would give us more turkey. So now at this point, I mean, we're the only ones at this place. Everything is closed. It's a pretty isolated area. Nobody around. And we got to go to the bathroom and there's some bathrooms like, I don't know, 300 yards away. So as we're walking to the bathrooms, wait, and you know, on our way back, we're going to pull up our pots for the last time because we don't have any more turkey. So he starts going on and on about how I've got all this little faith and look at the weather that has happened because of him and the crab that's happened because of him. And he says, do you not think if I prayed right now that God would bless us with turkey out of the sky that he wouldn't do it. And at this point, I promise you, I'm like, you're now we're having that conversation. You're out of your mind. You're just straight up crazy. Right. And I was actually laughing because he started praying and he's like, and then he goes into the King James thing again. Oh God of heaven and thine earth. And he goes on and on and on. Right. We need Turkey. -eth. Turkeyeth. And and he goes on for about a minute and I'm cracking up and I'm just like, you are out of your stinking mind. You're so crazy. And I kid you not, as soon as he finished that prayer, there was two seagulls who had gotten in a trash can about 75 yards away. And one of them had a turkey leg in its mouth and it was flying over us and they were fighting and in the middle of the fight in the air, 
that turkey leg dropped right in front of us. Is that not crazy? It almost gives me chills telling you guys about it. It dropped right in front of our feet. And he looked at me and I looked at him and I didn't have nothing. I didn't know what to say about him. I mean, what are you going to say about that? And man, I'll tell you what, if you didn't think this guy's head was big and he is the most blessed person in the whole world before that, as soon as that happened, and, and we'll never forget it, as soon as that happened, man, I was just dying. I was cracking up so bad because I couldn't believe it. I mean, what are the odds of that? I don't know. Maybe he is the most blessed man in the world. He's still doing good. He's like 90 years old now. But that's my story. That's my crazy story. I never would have believed it if it wouldn't have happened. And you know, God can do some amazing things that are unbelievable. That unless they actually happen to you, you wouldn't believe it. Anyway, listen, do me a favor. If you guys, if you're up to it, and, and I'll, I'm going to do a God and all of that stuff later. But just personally, I would love to see a video in response to this. You don't even have to mention my name. Um, but I would love to see a story that is so crazy that nobody would believe it unless it happened to you and it's true. Let me know about it. God bless you guys. Peace.